Hey, my good friends, Sam Haymart with Test Driven TV. I have just spent a week with the 2023 Lexus NX 450H Plus plug-in hybrid in this beautiful shade of ultrasonic blue mica. And so I'm gonna show it to you inside now. We're gonna take it for a short drive, and then I'm gonna tell you what it's really like to live with. The vehicle we have here today is a 2023 Lexus NX 450H Plus. That means plug-in hybrid. This comes in a standard hybrid model. This one is very well equipped. Ultrasonic blue mica paint. I love this color. You're probably going to hear me say that more than once. But with the F Sport, this has a more aggressive body design. And with all of the options we're pricing out here at just under $63,000, near the top of what you can spend on this particular vehicle and so some of the features worth noting are a unique fascia and grill design with the f sport package pretty aggressive i might say uh, when this first started happening with lexus vehicles a lot of people thought this was horrific but as the years have gone on it's really starting to grow on me and this is one of the better iterations i think of the lexus spindle grill and the f sport more aggressive design language and when you look around the vehicle a lot of the creasing and the forms that you see really accentuated by this metallic paint in the sun. A lot going on in terms of design. Wheels on this, 20 inch wheels. They don't actually look that big on this vehicle at all. It just all seems to fit and have good proportions. Headlights on this one are an optional headlight, the triple beam LED adaptive headlights. And some of the finishes I, I really like around the windows. This has a sort of black chrome, which really looks sharp up on the top roof bars so that you can mount accessory roof racks and on this one a sunroof not a full panoramic sunroof up there but looking at the rear power rear hatch as you'd expect in this price range beautiful led taillights with a continuous bar that goes all the way across the back and ties that design together and down on the lower fascia no big exhaust tips or anything like that just a nice simple design we are a plug-in hybrid not accentuating the gasoline engine there but when it comes to charging this, the charging port is at the right rear three quarter and you can just pop that open, plug it in. So you do have to back this into your garage or back this into a space where you might be charging it as opposed to pulling it straight in. And that mirrors the actual gas fill up that you find on the left side of the rear quarter. The interior of the NX is one of the latest designs from Lexus and it continues the brand DNA of high quality materials, high quality switch gear, and in modern times, a big screen on the dash, as you can see. Because I have the F Sport, I've got the F Sport Sport seats, which are upholstered in a new Lex, which is vinyl. It's almost like leather and it feels very good. These seats are comfortable, they're power adjustable, they have heating and cooling, which I can access through the big screen here. And also part of the package is the S-Sport steering wheel with paddle shifters, which can give you some pretty well done simulated shifts with the ECVT. Ahead of me, of course, is a fully digital instrument cluster, and that does change up with the drive modes. It doesn't have that sliding ring like some of the other S-Sport models do, but it's a very well done instrument cluster in terms of information reading graphics etc quality materials in here is very good and the layout of the design for living with it every day also well executed i love that there's actually a pad right here for my phone and one where not only can i charge it that is an optional charger but important to me is i can see when it lights up and there's a notification i can take a glance at it and see what's going on there also usb ports for connecting and charging cup holders off to the side and while we don't have a conventional shift knob here it's kind of a little nub a joystick a toggle if you will it works pretty well it's intuitive enough much better than a knob in my opinion behind it buttons for various modes and traction control and here inside a nice big storage area i love it when they give us storage especially in an suv there's room i would say for two square tissue boxes in there that's sort of my mode of measurement and so well done well done lexus and it opens both ways it goes both ways how about that 
Also found here is a sunroof. Now this isn't a full panoramic sunroof, but a sunroof nonetheless. A little console up there at the top as well. The second row passengers in the NX are going to enjoy a pretty comfortable place for this size class. These seats are set from my height about 5'8", and as such, I've got about two inches ahead of my knees here. If I had somebody that was more of a six footer in front of me, I might be feeling a little bit more snug, but the good thing here is that the seating height is pretty good. The battery of this vehicle tends to be packaged under here a little bit, which guarantees the fact that I'm not sitting down in a hole. And headroom, very good. I've got about almost six inches above my head here, even though we have a sunroof. So in that way, we're doing pretty well. The seat is firm. I do have a fold down armrest here in the center, cup holders there, and down on the center console, vents for the rear, and down at the bottom, some charging ports two USB ports and also a 12 volt outlet. So if you're looking for a charging, you're not going to be let down back here. The rear cargo area is pretty sizable. We didn't give up very much in terms of having a plug-in hybrid here. These seats do fold down in a 60-40 split, giving you that full SUV load floor. So, so a lot of versatility here with the NX450H+. When it comes to scoring this interior, like many Lexus interiors, I'm very happy with it. The quality is good, the design is good, the comfort, exceptional. There isn't a touch point in here where you go, gosh, that feels cheap. And there's a lot of versatility here, both with the storage in the center console as well as in the back. And even though we do have a plug-in hybrid, uh, there's no compromise when it comes to storage capability and cargo area. This interior gets five out of five stars. The infotainment system here is probably the most difficult thing to ignore in this vehicle. A laptop size 14 inch touchscreen and for 2023 it has a lot of feature content. It has Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, those are wireless, but most important this has a Google backend and that means that you can treat this like a Google device in terms of voice activated controls, the navigation. This has a sound system which while this isn't the full tilt mark levinson sound system here a very good one at that sound quality is very good and integrated into this big screen is controls for the climate and hvac now as you go through the menus moving around here pretty easy getting into the different controls I found the graphics are pretty good, and while this white screen is sort of interesting to look at on the video, you can reverse that to a dark screen. But the voice-activated controls, what I like about this being an Android guy here with my phone, is that it's very much like using all of my other Android and Google functions, even on my laptop and my desktop computer that I'm familiar with. And here, to call it up, you say, Hey, Lexus. How can I help you? I'm hungry for Chinese food thinking i found 15 results the first is walk and roll downtown phoenix at north central avenue would you like to go to that one no i don't like that place cancel i like the fact that you can be very conversational with the google backend and i found this in other vehicles that use it the only downside to all of the services and all of the features that this has is that the majority of it is subscription based i don't like the fact that I'm spending $63,000 for a vehicle and I'm also going to get a monthly payment to get all of the features that this infotainment system offers. This does have a good backup camera and here with the optional equipment this has, it has a 360 degree surround view. When it comes to rating this system, I really love playing with it. I really love using it. I like talking to it. It's got good sound. Graphics are good. It's got a lot of feature content and fortunately, some of that feature content costs extra every month in terms of a subscription-based setup. And I don't really like that as a consumer. So outside of that, very good. This system gets four out of five stars. All right, my friends, let's take this thing for a drive. Now, I live in the city and I've spent my week driving this in and around the city. And so that's where we're gonna test drive it today for sort of talking about what my experience has been. And so, Basically, mechanically speaking, this car is identical to the RAV4 Prime, the plug-in hybrid version of the RAV4. So in terms of chassis, engine, suspension, 
what it drives like, it's very similar to that. And that's not a bad thing at all. In fact, that car was on my buy it list when we test drove it two years ago. And it's impossible to get at dealerships right now. So what does that mean? Under the hood is a 2.5 liter gasoline engine and the Toyota Lexus well-proven hybrid drivetrain. Here, it has a more powerful set of motors and it has all wheel drive. And that gives it 302 horsepower total system horsepower. That's a lot. And with the extra battery capacity afforded by the plug-in hybrid, this has a total electric only range of 36 miles, which means it operates as an electric vehicle for that first 36 miles. Then once that, that EV range has depleted in the battery, it sort of flips back to operating as a conventional hybrid vehicle. So 36 miles range in EV mode, and then 36 MPG as a hybrid, which even as a base hybrid isn't a bad place to be. So it's a little bit less usually with the plug-in hybrid because we've got the extra heavyweight battery. So driving it around town, what I found is that the level of power is quite good. And even under electric only power, it's, it's got a lot of torque and it moves off the line quite well and gets around town. And when you really ask for a lot of power, particularly in sport mode, it's going to fire that gasoline engine up, even if you're in EV mode. Power is really good. You can really hear it. It works really well. It's always right there. And really one of the nice things about this is the fact that this is a powertrain that's been around for quite a while. This is just the latest generation of decades of Toyota and Lexus offering hybrids. So in my week with it, um, you know, I plugged in most of the time on the evenings and kept this battery up. And so what little bit I did use the gasoline engine, uh, I hardly even came off of the full mark on the gas tank. And I'm showing 55 to 60 miles to the gallon on the MPG meter, which with a plug-in hybrid, that's just fun because uh, if you use the battery, it's blended and you really never know. So I'm very impressed with this powertrain. It's efficient. It works great as an EV. It's got plenty of power and it's refined. And so I'm very impressed. This powertrain gets five out of five stars. Now to the handling. As I mentioned, this is essentially the same chassis you're going to find under the Toyota RAV4, uh, RAV4 Prime to be exact. And as such, that means it's good. And so driving around town, it feels solid. I have these things here in Phoenix called speed humps. They have them in neighborhood areas to keep us from going too fast over the posted speed limit. And so I like to go over them at the posted speed limit just to see how the car feels. Does it clunk? Does it thunk? And no feel solid as a rock and it doesn't beat you to death. So um, over rough roads, which we have a lot of here in Phoenix, I do find that this chassis is very well buttoned down, very well put together. And with these big 20 inch wheels and low profile tires, I have a nice sure footed feeling of confident handling when I throw this thing into a corner, going around curves and things like that. And what time I have spent out on some curvy roads in the highway this week, I have found that it has a pretty good level of grip and out on the highway it's very quiet in spite of these large tires and wheels and so it just has a nice feel to it and that's something to be said because in the past Toyota and Lexus didn't always have the most engaging handling and driving experience and since this new chassis architecture has come about uh, it's actually a car that's fun to drive it's actually a car that is quite enjoyable steering feel is just right and of course, if you dial it up to sport mode, it gets a little bit of a heavier feel. And the brake modulation on this is quite good too. With a hybrid, with a plug-in hybrid, brakes aren't always all that great. Ford especially, not so good. They don't have it nailed down yet, but here, the feel of the brakes, the actuation, when you're maneuvering in a parking lot or just in town, uh, they feel good, they feel natural. So I'm very pleased with the overall level of refinement there. The best part here really is the fact that this is a vehicle that is pretty expensive. As I mentioned, we're on the same platform architecture as 
a much lesser priced Toyota, but the tuning and the feel here is very much fitting of the price tag. It feels its price. This chassis gets five out of five stars. Having spent the whole week with the Lexus NX 450H Plus plug-in hybrid, I gotta tell you, I'm very impressed. I like this car a lot. And I like it because I like electric vehicles, but I'm also someone who likes to take a road trip now and then from here and go to LA or Palm Springs from Phoenix. And that's hard to do with an electric car. It takes a little bit more planning and work and time. Whereas here, uh, I have spent the week driving this car around, plugging it in overnight with electric power most of the time. And I'm barely coming off a of full on the fuel tank. And so that means I could drive this every day in the city where I live here as an electric vehicle for the most part and be able to take that road trip whenever I want without worrying about, oh gosh, you know, where are all the charging stations and how long is that going to take and so on and so forth. But when we look at value, uh, this is priced out just about the same as any one of those luxury crossover SUVs uh, that you might compare this to that would be uh, a plug-in hybrid or an EV. So it's right in the range. But when I look at things like option pricing, this has a 6.6 .6 kilowatt hour uh, optional charger. I don't know that it's really that necessary on a plug-in hybrid and for nearly a thousand bucks, not a good value, I don't think, because it takes uh, two hours less because of that. It only takes four and a half hours without it to charge this up. And you can plug it in overnight on a 120 outlet and it gets there anyway. So I, I find that a dubious value on this particular vehicle. If it were a full electric car and it cut from eight to four hours, well, that's a different story. That said, all the other options on this car, some of them are pretty pricey for what you get. And you saw those floating across the screen as we were talking about those things. So value here, Price, options pricing, warranty, not the best in the business on some of the things. I put value at four out of five stars, but when you put that in with everything we've already talked about here today, we are at four and a half stars total for the review. Exceptional. And you know what else? It goes on my buy list for 2023, second car of the year to do so. I like it well enough that if I were spending in this category to get a plug-in hybrid luxury SUV, I get it. I totally would. I really like it that much. It's just a nice blend of quality, luxury, comfort, fun to drive, efficiency. It's got, it checks all the boxes. Is it the best value? No, <laughs> but it's a luxury vehicle. They hardly are. So there you go. I'd buy a list. Yeah, highly recommended. So if you like what we do, please follow us on social media. We have a lot of updates and news pieces and things like that. We don't always do a video on. You can see our latest video right there, but better yet, subscribe to our YouTube channel right down there because you'll there stay informed of everything we do. Stay tuned.